Well, the good news is if you didn't get a chance to see this live, here it is now recorded for you to watch as often as you need to. You don't want to miss part two that's coming up. And by the time you get a chance to review this, we may already have it up as well. So sit back, watch Melissa Palmer walk us through all the beautiful things that VAO 3O will do for us. Thanks. Stand by. Listen, one of the cool things that I get to do here at the Vanimal is drop content for you guys as often as can. I get amazing people like Melissa Palmer on here, but both of us have a challenge of trying to get more subscribers to our site. So at the bottom of this video that I'm pushing now, you'll get a link to subscribe to Melissa's site as well as to the Vanimal site. So if you could take two seconds, click on those so you can make sure all the new content for everything cool Melissa's doing, you'll get, as well as everything that's coming off the Vanimal site. We would really appreciate that. Well, Melissa, welcome back. I feel like I have you here often, which is always good for everyone involved. Thank you so much for agreeing to do some VAO. Thank you for having me back once again. Yeah, yeah. so we didn't wreck the studio last time, so I guess it's okay for you to roll back in. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, today, uh, you know, we're going to begin our series in VAO 3O. And yes. I know you have a couple things you want to talk to the audience about what we're doing. But again, uh, my name is Van Flowers. I'm one of the SCs at Veeam, uh, cover the central region. And this is Melissa Palmer. She is our resident expert on VAO, amongst many other things. So Melissa, it's all you, buddy. Thank you. So thank you, everybody, uh, for coming today. Last time we did a really cool Veeam 1 demo. And I would be remiss if I didn't have a little bit of Veeam 1 in here, too. I like to interlink things. Uh, my name is Melissa Palmer. As Van mentioned, I am a senior technologist on the product strategy team here at Veeam. And one of the products I do a lot of work with is Veeam Availability Orchestrator. Now, I think I have a really unique perspective on it because I actually started with it when it was still in beta. I had just come to Veeam and my boss, Rick Vanner, was like, hey, here's this great new product coming out. It's going to be a really good way for you to dive into everything Veeam because we do a lot with VNR under the covers in VAO. So we're going to talk specifically about VAO in a couple different ways. This is part one of a two-part series, and our whole theme, because we do themes here, right, Van? Our theme is that we're going to launch an orchestration plan and teach you everything you need to know that around that. So instead of the Harry Potter um, sweater today, I am wearing the SpaceX Demo 2 launch jacket. If you watch any of the SpaceX Demo 2 coverage where they launched the International Space Station with a crew for the first time, uh, one of the wonderful commentators, she had the exact same jacket on. So I saw that and I had to get it. And I've been looking for an excuse to wear it for some kind of official function this whole time. So this is what I came up with. So let's start with, I know, right? I can't help it, Van. I love my themes. It makes it a little more interesting, right? Well, if anyone has been watching the bumpers, you know, that's one of my favorite things to do. I love to do the, the bumpers that we've been putting out there. But there are some really good ones that I'm saving for when we do part two. But you know, the whole launch thing is killing me because my wife's down the hall. She's like going, are there rockets in your office? <laughs> no, no, there's really not. It's funny. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So we're actually going to, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to launch orchestration plans in VAO. Before we do that, I'm actually going to bore you with just um, one slide, right? Just one slide, because I really want to set the stage for what we're going to talk about, because there is so much you can do with VAO and so many capabilities, right? So when we talk about VAO, we're talking about orchestrating the recovery of three different types of assets right now. Veeam replicas, version 1.0, Veeam backups, version 2.0, and now in version three, NetApp on tap snapshots. Now, Van and I go way back to NetApp, so this is something I know we're both personally very excited about, and we're gonna show you how that all works under the covers. When we talk about VAO, we kind of put things into three different buckets, right? Reliable recovery. We need to be able to reliably recover our applications and our, hey, our whole data center even, right? That's why we're here. That's why we're doing this. So we're reliable recovery at the application level. You know, a lot of people ask me, well, I can recover anything with BNR, and you absolutely can, but 
when you get into recovering complete applications from end to end and whole data centers, do you really want to make your poor backup administrator sit there and do that, right? So we can orchestrate that whole process and it's really seamless. So today we're going to focus on reliable recovery, launching some orchestration plans, but I'm also going to show you configuration and how to get up and running with VAM. Now, next week, here's where we're going to split things. We're going to dive into the automated testing piece powered by Veeam Data Labs, so completely non-disruptive testing, scheduled on demand. Hey, you can run your data lab test every Tuesday, right? Just schedule that for next Tuesday and let it run. No human intervention required, but we can do a lot of great stuff with that data lab once it's running, like test your applications, test the patches for that new zero day, pretty much whatever you want. And then finally, you know, a lot of the techie people watching this are gonna be like, oh, documentation, right? It's so boring, but it is so very important for compliance and proving that your DR um, plans and tests are actually working. So we're gonna do a deeper dive on testing and documentation next week. But today we're gonna focus on getting up and running and launching some orchestration plans. So now let's head over to my lab right here. So here is VAO. When you log in, you get a really cool dashboard view of what's going on in your environment. So how many plans and what they're doing, a readiness check, which I'll talk about, really lightweight check to see if your environment is ready to fail over and your testing status. And you can see I have some work to do here, which is why we're going to do a deep dive on testing and documentation. We call everything an orchestration plan in VAO. And I just want to start by showing you how easy it is to launch one, right? So uh, Van, we're going to start with a replica plan, actually. And I'm going to save the NetApp storage plan for something really special later. Cool. So Good. my favorite yeah. button. Yeah, exactly. My favorite button in VAO, if you haven't figured it out yet, is this launch button right here. So you click cool. the launch button. I know I can't help it. I don't know. I just suddenly noticed it one day and it's just like my favorite thing. I so wanted to have like rocket sounds in the background, but I couldn't get it recorded today. Yeah. Um, so launch, but remember we can also schedule our plans to run, which I think we'll probably take a look at next week. Click run. Now my plan is not enabled. Uh, I will need to enable it to run it. If it was enabled, I would just kind of skip this step, type in my password, and hopefully VAO doesn't time out on me. I'm in a shared lab and people do all sorts of crazy stuff. So sometimes you'll see stuff spinning. Not my fault, not VAO's fault, just shared lab fault. Uh, towards your restore point, right? I'm gonna pick my most recent one, but you could browse for a later one if you needed to. It's gonna tell me my latest readiness track. I'm going to click next. I'm going to click finish. And that's literally it. You're going to see the status of the plan change to failover. And that's it. My replica is going to start failing over. So we'll go take a look at that in a little bit. But Van, I think I just want to show a little bit about configuration and show you how easy it is to actually get up and running with VAO. Because it really is yeah. simple. And people get kind of yeah. intimidated for some strange reason. Uh, I don't know why. that um, is very intimidating. You see that screen and it first pops up and it's like, oh, by the way, fill all this stuff out. It's like, where does all this crap go? And, and as you look at it, yeah, so I mean, welcome to all that. Mission Control yeah. of your data center, right? Like Mission Control, they have mm -hmm. all these screens with all these things on it. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here, but it's really simple. In version three, we also added this awesome dashboard, which basically just tells you at a glance, hey, you're doing good, right? You have everything configured. And we do, right? So I'm gonna show you two things, right? We're gonna go through the full stack here, but I'm also gonna kind of show you the quick and dirty, let me get a plan running as fast as possible configuration as well. So first things first, we're just gonna go right down here. We have our VAO server. This is my server here. I should add important information like contact name information, but I haven't. And we have this really cool pop-up video thing in VAO. So when you're going through your configuration, uh, it'll kind of help you along the way, right? So you could click here and read more and go through all these steps and it'll tell you, hey, here's how to get more information on what you're configuring. So it's, it's really easy. VAO agents. Now, this is super important. So we're going to connect to your Veeam backup and replication servers that you already have in your environment by pushing an agent out to them. And once we install this agent, we're going to be able to orchestrate that server and more importantly, we are going to understand all the backup and replication jobs you already have in your environment, right? So if you're already configured with, you know, the jobs with the right RPOs and application level and all that good stuff, you're set, right? You're ready to go out of the box. So 
we're just going to connect to your BNR environment and use what's there. People think, oh, I have to install a new BNR and do this and this. No, we're, if you're already doing all this stuff, we're, we're going to be able to see it. Now, there is something that we do install with VAO, and that's an embedded version of Veeam Backup and Replication. It's installed on the VAO server, and that becomes really, really special in version three. In version three, we have the crazy ability to run in like a standalone mode, right? Where you don't need an existing backup and replication server anywhere in your environment to protect your NetApp on tap uh, data stores, right? So if you're a whole NetApp shop, but you're looking for a better way to recover from snap mirrors other than, and I used to do this, right? I migrated a whole data center with NetApp snap mirror um, before I came to Veeam. And the first time I saw VAO3, I joked that I needed to build a time machine and bring this back to myself because what did we have to do? I was on the VCR team, right? We P of E this stuff. Uh, we let it replicate for a week. Then they, somebody had to break the mirror, mount it in the new data center. I had to go in there, mount the data store, re-register the VMs. And then I had to run a bunch of scripts on them manually because we were migrating to a new company, right? So we had to install the software and all the garbage and all this stuff. And it was this big, long manual process. It was absolutely terrible. And VAO would have done it for me in a click like I just showed you. So, I, I think I appreciate you for reminding me of that nightmare. I've been trying to get rid of that for years. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. VAO gets rid of it, right? So in a NetApp only environment, all you need to do is pop in VAO. And I'll show you in a minute how to add your storage systems. Once you add your storage systems, VAO will understand all your snap mirror relationships. So you're basically good to go. As for the data lab testing piece, as you all may or may not know, data labs is a BNR feature. We can use the embedded BNR server for data lab testing for the storage plans, right? So again, you don't need an embedded BNR server anywhere in your environment. Uh, you don't need an additional BNR server anywhere in your environment. Use the embedded one. However, there are some benefits to using Veeam for backup of your VMs living on NetApp, of course. Uh, net backup from storage snapshot which is like the reason I work here basically, because I thought that was the coolest thing in the world, right? We keep those VM snaps open for like barely any time at all. Snap your storage, do the backup from the storage snapshot. And when you have BNR driving those storage snapshots, you can add application consistency to them, right? So definitely a great way to get BNR in your environment. Again, not needed to protect it, but once you have it there, you know, 30 free day free trial of anything at Veeam. So play around with it and you can see some of the benefits it can bring to your NetApp storage. vCenter, of course, we need to add our vCenters. When you configure VAO, uh, there's an initial configuration wizard after you install the first time you run through it. You'll add one, come in here, click add, add the rest of your vCenters, done. Storage systems, again, it's like a button, click, add, enter your credentials, done, that's it. So we are adding them at the NetApp SVM level. And these are my SVM IPs, and that's it. I've added my NetApp storage systems. Again, there's a lot of things on the side here, but it's pretty simple. Hey, Melissa, tell them what yeah. SVM is. Tell them what SVM is. Uh -huh. So which answer do you Brief, want? Man? Briefly, yeah. <laughs> which answer do you want? So uh, I was an SE at NetApp for a while before I joined Veeam. I actually moved into products and designed and architected the FlexPod solution as well. So any of those like FlexPod CVDs, yeah, I used to write those. Anyway. When I came to NetApp, I had like no storage experience and I come from the VMware world, right? And somebody's trying to explain CDOT to me and I'm like, so basically you're telling me it's VMware for storage, right? And that's kind of what it is. It's a logical virtual machine, a storage virtual machine, and it Correct. sits on top of your NetApp cluster, right? And kind of abstracts the layer underneath. So, you know, in NetApp world, we have disks, disk gets get, get aggregated to added to aggregates, volumes get carved up from aggregates, all that good stuff. At the SVM level, you put that SVM level in, you create a volume, you tie it to the SVM, and those volumes can kind of be anywhere in your NetApp ONTAP cluster. So you might have two nodes of flash storage for your really fast workloads, a couple nodes of you know cheaper SATA storage for some class two workloads, maybe with some caching in there. You could have volumes from both of those in the same storage virtual machine. So you know, prod VMware, dev test VMware, all in the same SVM, all living at different places in your NetApp cluster. That's kind of my two cents, man, on how I usually thought of it. Perfect. And that, it. That's because a lot of times when I'm talking to folks and I understand CDOT and, and moving from seven mode and all the things that we did that we pulled our hair out about. You know, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. The is, so I thought we'd make sure we plug that in today so people will get that, that detail. And 
and basically VMware for storage is a perfect analogy. So, I don't know. I, I don't know if NetApp officially sanctions that or not, but that's I doubt it. Yeah, <laughs> I doubt it. Um, so anyway, if you're already a NetApp customer, chances are you already have everything configured. You probably have a VMware SVM, right, in your environment, serving uh, data to your VMware environment. By application or by protocol are both common ways to deploy SVM. So you probably have a VMware SVM already, and you probably have those SnapMirror relationships already established. If you don't, they're actually super easy to set up anyway, so not a big uplift. Now, recovery locations. This is just a fancy way of saying a logical grouping of resources that you're going to recover your VMs to with VAO. And there's a couple different types. So when you see these restore plans, these restore types, that's when we're restoring from uh, Veeam backups. And these storage ones are um, basically just a logical grouping of your resources for your NetApp, right? So what do we put in there? We put compute. So you can see I have a vSphere cluster in here. Uh, storage systems, I've mapped one of those storage systems you saw from the other screen in storage systems into here, and that's my storage system. Network mapping rules. So I have I have a pretty boring flat network, but they are uh, different in each data center. So I can map my network from my source and my destination. And then again, re-IPing rules. So let's say my prod is 10.1.xxx, but my DR is 10.2.xxx for a certain application, right? I can actually put all those IP mappings in here if I need to. Now, when you go to launch, a storage orchestration plan, VAO is so smart under the covers that it knows the best place to put your VMs based on all this data, right? So based on your recovery location and based on where your VMs start, VAO will automatically determine where it's recovering to. So you don't even need to worry about this once you set it up once for NetApp LAN. When it comes to a restore plan and you launch a restore orchestration plan, you'll actually go and pick the location you would like to recover to because, you know, you might have different locations based on whatever. But because we have that snap mirror going on in NetApp world, we always know where your data is and uh, where we want it to be. And one other cool feature I want to point out is uh, other than a disaster recovery data migration tool, one thing that's really cool with VIO is when you run that storage orchestration plan, you have an option in there. And you're not going to see that because the way I'm going to run it, you have an option in there to reverse resync your storage. So when VIO fails over to your second site, It'll reverse that snap mirror and start a resync in the other direction for you to send your data back home. So if you're migrating temporarily because, hey, we got to shut down the data center or whatever, or maybe that's not a use case because your storage probably wouldn't work. But if you're moving workloads around with VAO, uh, it'll automatically send it in the other direction to you. Too. So we're protecting that data through every stage here. That's how we protect it with NetApp. We reverse resync the storage. When it comes to a restore or a replica plan, there's an actually a place in here where you set up your uh, BNR jobs on the back end, right? So you create these template BNR jobs. And when you do a, when you launch an orchestration plan and you're running in a different location, you can actually back up those VMs with BNR as if they were production, right? So I could put a couple catch all jobs in my environment, like, uh, you know, 12 hour RPO, eight hour RPO. And I just map those to whatever plan based on RPO, make sure I'm protecting my data in failover as well. So VAO kind of thinks of everything for you. It's it's really, really a great tool. It's, it's ridiculously powerful. It's I'm crazy. Coming. It does everything. It does everything. I love it. Anyway, uh, as far as I promised you the quick and dirty method to VAO, if you just want to create an orchestration plan and see if it runs, not testing anything, just like create, whatever, run, this is all you need to configure right here. Right? This is it. Uh, we'll go through the rest of the steps as well, but if you're looking for quick and dirty, I want to see, I want to get this up and running. I need to test something. There you go. The data lab testing comes in this data lab assignment plan components. We're going to go through the rest now, but quick and dirty, it's like one, two, three, four, five steps. That's it. Get ready and run and work, create an orchestration plan. And after we go through the config, I will also show you how to create a storage orchestration plan. Reporting, I mentioned briefly that uh, there's a ton of documentation in VAO and you can actually subscribe people to the reports that VAO generates via email. So you can say, hey, I'm going to add van to all of my orchestration plans or certain orchestration plans. You see this site scope thing right here. I'm gonna explain that in a minute, but I could say, hey, Krypton Sewer application team, I'm gonna add all your app owners here and you subscribe you to every report that VAO 
deals with for your application. And I'm gonna explain that a little more in a minute, but again, subscribe it. So reports are always in the inboxes and you know that you're in compliance and you know that you're ready for failover. Also report level detail. Uh, we have three levels of reporting. So minimum, medium, all details, which is what I use. So you can kind of tailor that a little better based on your requirements and your environment. Now plan steps. This is the magic of VAO, right? So out of the box, we have so many enterprise verification steps right here. So Exchange, SQL, web servers, right? We can verify all that with kind of canned stuff for you to make sure that your application is working and all that great stuff. What makes VAO super powerful is if you see these kind of, um, you know, these command prompt little icons here, these are all custom scripts that I have uploaded to VAO. You can upload any PowerShell script you want and literally make VAO do anything you want it to because it can run any PowerShell script. Am I supposed to say that? Probably not, but- uh, I'm sorry, I'm, can you do that one more time? Yeah. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be saying stuff like this, any but you can PowerShell upload- script. Yeah. <laughs> PowerShell script and you can make VAO do anything you want it to by using these PowerShell scripts. So for example, uh, I think I usually have like a DNS changes script in here. Put that at the beginning of your plan in the pre-plan steps category and I'll show you that. Make Let it make your changes and by the end of your plan running, you'll be good to go. Application verification. This is a really popular thing, right? If you're in a highly regulated environment, you might need to prove your application is where you say it is and doing what it's supposed to. You can upload any scripts like that. Um, like I said, anything. So if anything takes any PowerShell M script, I've done some weird stuff with UCS manager, sending it PowerShell from VAO. You can do that too. Um, but I, let's just take a look at my VAO demo test script real quick. And I'll show you this. So I uploaded this to VAO. Uh, you gave it a name and a description, which I probably should give a description. I'm really bad with that in my lab. Step parameter. So here's kind of all of the canned stuff in VAO. And here's something really important. I just used a DNS example, right? You might not want to test DNS changes with a data lab test because, hey, that's impactful per to protection. So you can say, am I actually going to run that during a test or not? The same thing as fail back and undo. Maybe you only need to run it in the first direction, right? Maybe I skip it. Is it a critical step? You can say, hey, if a critical step fails, uh, halt the plan so someone can go and fix it. You can set that. Timeout retries. Execute location. This is cool. So you can set it to execute a number of different places. So on the Veeam backup server, in the guest OS, or on the VAO server itself. So where do you want the script to run? And then we have a list of all these common parameters. And these are just, uh, if you go into the VAO documentation, there's a whole list. We can pass parameters back and forth from the script. So for example, if you ran this script on a VM, you could pull information about like the VM name, IP, all that kind of stuff, and kind of make your scripts more general and let them run against everything in your environment. So that's super cool too. Yeah, to Anytime, Melissa, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, Melissa, for some of my, and I know today we've got a couple different hospital teams on, as well yes. as folks that are down from uh, the Pentagon area. Mm -hmm. Guys, this is exactly what we talked about a few weeks ago when we were talking about, I need a special case to do this or to make that happen. Melissa just described to us exactly how we can go in and tweak and modify this so your particular secure environment or your medical records area or the area that you're trying to segment to do a specific test on can be done right here inside the system. So to answer your questions for the collective group of you guys who've been asking me this, it can absolutely be done. Absolutely. Go yeah, ahead. and absolutely. Please turn it, tune in for next week too, because I've actually given a lot of lectures and demos to um, customers in our government segment about like the NIST framework and how this ties in for proving, um, you know, backup recovery, all that kind of good stuff. So when we get to the documentation piece next week, uh, your your mind is going to be blown by the stuff that we can actually show you. So tune in next week too. Yeah, I'm stoked. That looks yeah, so you'll have the ability to update any uh, plans you might have with it. Do I actually have it? Yeah, I have a plan running here, but I didn't make any changes, so we're just going to cancel out. So come in, upload any of your scripts, and make VAO do anything you want it to, basically. Really cool. Settings, uh, that's kind of boring. UI activity, logout, but, you know, important, right? You don't want to, like, just leave the keys to the kingdom running, which we're about to talk about more because roles and scopes. This is the coolest thing ever. So we use something called site scopes in a VAO, and that's just kind of our role-based access. 
So the next thing when we go to this plan component screen is how do I map everything to these scopes? But our whole idea with VAO is create a site scope, right? Create a site scope, map in VM groups, which are just powered by vSphere tags, map in your recovery lo uh, locations, map in your plan steps we just showed about, right? Maybe you want to put specific application steps and only the app team can access them. Map in all that stuff. And when an application owner logs into VAO, that's all they will see, right? So you can hand over the VAO UI to these application owners that know their applications the best and lock everything down so they can't do anything they're not supposed to. When we give somebody in the scope this plan author role, that just means basically they can come in, create new plans, run tests, and execute them, right? Very simple. This plan operator role is super cool. It's in version three. And all you can do is come in and basically hit the big red button, right? So perfect for your ops team, right? App owner comes in, hey, ops team, uh, my Krypton store uh, application, something happened or the data center's down. Can you just go whatever? Boom, they come in, they hit that launch button, they launch the plan, they're good to go. So this is really designed to be able to be handed over from an ops perspective to an ops team and to your application owners. Because who knows the application's the best, right? The application owners, you don't want to, you're kind of backup people and VM people. We don't want to get in the business of actually having to create these plans. We don't know what these applications do. So again, empower the people who know things best. So uh, I everything you see, I usually just do in the admin scope because I have that cooked up here. So when we go through the plan thing, you'll see, I'll see all the scopes. Data lab assignments. So like I talked about, Veeam data labs, uh, under the covers, we have to configure them once in BNR, and I'll dive deeper into that next week. And my lab is being silly. But once we actually have the data labs, we just come to this screen here. And if it ever loads, we assign them to our environment. There we go. Uh, so again, I have a couple data labs in my environment. See, I have this Krypton Sword data lab. I made it just for the application team. I have it mapped to the site scope. So when anybody in that scope goes to do any testing, all they can see is that data lab. Really super simple. Now, plan components. This is how we kind of build those scopes. So if we come to, uh, let's just say, let's go with Mars, because I'm really into the space theme, right? I might have made that. So when we come to the Mars thing, we can kind of add everything we need to. So I added a couple applications. We can add a couple more here, right? And we're going to flip them to include. I like to come in, exclude everything, and then I flip everything to include and all that good stuff. Recovery locations, like I said, we map our recovery locations. Let's add this site to recovery location. Again, we can map these plan stops. I've included some of them here. We'll add another one. Any kind of credentials we need, we can add them here. And here is something really cool too. Template jobs, that's what I talked about a little before. So we create these jobs in BNR, and let's include those in our scope for fun. We create these jobs in BNR, and once we're in a failover scenario where we're running in whatever site we're running, these jobs will kick it and protect our data based on how they're configured. So again, I like to put the RPO right in the job name in this case, so I need my job. 12 hour RPO, VO protection, it is scheduled to run every 12 hours. So when you create that plan, um, when you create a replica or backup plan or restore plan, you're going to be able to pick those jobs. When you create a storage plan, you're not going to worry about picking those up because that reverse resync will kick in or you have the option to do that reverse resync once you fail over. And guys, that is it, man. We're basically configured when it comes to VAO at this point. Like, that's it. Uh, license, all that good stuff. You can put in your license here. If you and ever need to get to not to pull out in front of Melissa, but 22 minutes, guys. Literally. That's it. That's it. And it takes like 20 minutes, minutes to configure. Yeah. Um, in the unlikely event you have an issue, really easy to download logs. And here's all the URLs of everything if you change anything uh, during the install process. Like, seriously, that's all there is to it. And, you know, I don't know why, but people think VAO is like really complicated. And I've heard I've heard that from many people. And I'm like, no, it's not complicated at all. So going along with how uncomplicated this is, how about we create a new storage orchestration plan, Van, and talk about that a little bit. Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. So as I said before, like I'm logged in as an administrator, so you can see all of this stuff. Uh, if I was logging in as an app team, I wouldn't see this select a scope thing unless I had multiple scopes assigned to me. So we'll just say go on as an admin. We're going to call it Vanimal. 
call this plant a vanimal. I'm going to say van's the owner. There's no finer plant, obviously. No yes. finer plant. <laughs> Now, plan types, and we basically go through this same wizard for every plan. If I click over to restore, you'll see that has the most steps. When I go back to replica, that recovery location drops out. And when I go to storage, that protect VM group is gonna drop out. But it's all this same wizard. You create the plans so similarly. Um, there's a couple differences I'll pick out as we go through. But again, this is so simple to use. You can just hand it over to your app teams. But let's go with a storage plan. And again, we don't need to pick that recovery location, be, but because VAO understands your snap mirrors and your recovery locations you built, VAO is just going to handle over you. Now, VM groups, I want to pause here and talk a couple minutes because when we come to a storage orchestration plan in NetApp world, we're doing everything at the data store level, right? So I'm going to just add my NetApp data store. For the other two plans, we're going to use vSphere tags. Now, technically speaking, you could also use the embedded V1 business view that comes with VAO to do your categorization with business view groups as well. Now, if you remember last time with my V1 demo, I actually used my uh, business view on my VAO server to push those categorization groups. I built them using the intelligent engine in V1, and I pushed them to vCenter to push the vSphere tags to vCenter. Then I flipped the configuration of Veeam 1 back to suck the tags back down. That is what I recommend to everybody. Use the vSphere tags. If you want to use the intelligent uh, grouping in Veeam 1 Business View, absolutely. It's a great way to kind of get really granular with your applications. But then blast them out to tags and um, use it that way because you can actually create your Veeam backup jobs and replica jobs based off of vSphere tags. So use vSphere tags whenever you can. They make management so much easier. I used to manage a really big vSphere environment, over 1,000 hosts, over 25,000 VMs. So believe me, when I say do something because it's easier to manage, I know what I'm talking about, right? So if this was a restore or replica plan, we would see all of our vSphere tags in here to pick. And even when we would select a vSphere tag, we have this option here to view VMs, and it'll show us the VMs that have that tag or in the data store. So that is my soliloquy on vSphere tags. I love them. They're awesome. <laughs> I know. I, that's all I talk about is like vSphere tags, but hey, whatever. Okay, so if a VM recovery fails, what do you want to do? Do you want to halt, which is the default activity, or do you want to proceed with a plan, something to consider? Here's something really special. Recover the VM simultaneously or in sequence. So we're going to create this plan and then go back and edit it, and I'll show you how to sequence the VMs. But you can actually make VAO recover in a specific sequence if you have a specific you know, startup sequence for your application or anything like that. And then max VMs to recover, that only, uh, if you're going simultaneous, that's cool. If you're gonna do sequence, it's gonna bomb that out because it's gonna go one at a time and do them all. Now here are our plan steps that we saw from when we were configuring before. Anything I put in at this wizard level is going to apply to every VM in my orchestration plan. So if I needed to verify every VM for a specific application, put my application verification script, that's a good place. What I personally would not do here is I wouldn't verify the IIS um, or web server report on every VM in my plan. No, I'm gonna go back and edit it and show you how to add those plan steps at the per VM level. So again, when you add steps here, everything in your environment and you can change the order as well with this up down arrow, but we're gonna leave that there. Okay, how important is this? RPO and RTO, when you're talking about disaster recovery, it's all about RTO and RPO, and we can tell you exactly how you're meeting it, and we do that a couple different ways. And when it comes to RPO, whenever you run a readiness check, which is our really lightweight check of, hey, are you ready to fail over at any given moment? We're gonna check your NetApp snap mirror, your Veeam replica jobs, your Veeam backup jobs, and make sure the last run, the last successful run of that job is within your RPO window. If it's not, we're gonna tell you you need to fix it. And again, you can subscribe to those reports in VAO and get that all to your inbox automatically. So super important, RPO. RTO, man, how do I test my RTO? What do I do, right? I, I lock myself in the data center for like a weekend with my whole team. <laughs> And we try to we try to recover stuff and we order some food. And maybe if we have like a server or two recovered, we say, okay, that was a successful DR test. And we call it a day, right? It's a nightmare. 
And don't forget the old server that we're going to run Doom on so we can play that in the max side. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I, we, we used to play Unreal. Like, that was a thing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Got to get that server up first, the Unreal server, so we have something to do while we're sitting here waiting, right? Uh, but again, like, testing DR plans is terrible. We all know that. VAO makes it so easy. What we're going to do is we're going to start that Veeam data lab, and we're going to spin up a copy of your, uh, your backup data, your replica data, your NetApp snapshot. We're going to spin up that copy and do all the testing there. We're going to run through this plan in that data lab and make sure everything works. And we're going to give you an RTO from that, right? So how long the test takes is your RTO. If it's a Veeam replica plan, your replicas are already there. That's your accurate RTO. If it's a storage orchestration plan like this, again, your storage is already there. That's an accurate RTO. When it gets a little dicey is our restore from backup plan, our restore plans, right? Because we have a couple different options when that we run that test. We can run the quick and dirty test using Veeam's instant VM recovery technology. So just like start everything up and see if the steps work, right? That might not actually give you the accurate RTO. Then once you're comfortable that like I haven't wasted all this time and I have everything working, then we have the option to actually do the full restore test that will do all your restores for you and that for you and that will give you the accurate RTO in your environment. So we can test this anytime. And I'm gonna show you next week when we talk about testing, how you can schedule a DR test literally for next Tuesday and never touch anything again. Like it's amazing, it really is. So yeah, that is so key in this. And all the documentation is gonna tell you all the time if you're meeting these numbers or not. Guys, I cannot tell you, and I know Melissa's had these same conversations when we chat with customers, we go, hey, when's the last time you turned something off? <laughs> They go, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? Why would I do that? When's, Why would the I do that? Time, when's the last time you unplugged it? You know, how do you know if it's going to work? This is going to give you the ability to see that it does work, do a printout of the results of it, and pass it up the line to the C level folks. Then the onus is on to them saying, oh, by the way, I tested the plan. You want to test it tomorrow? You want to test it in two hours? Here you go. So couldn't get oh, it. Oh, and then, by the way, when we run a test, we have the ability to also leave the lab running to give your app owner the ability to text the zero day patches, train someone new in their environment and pretty much anything they want, right? So really powerful, all built right into this magnificent uh, blue web UI. Speaking of sending those reports to your C-levels, uh, we can do custom report templates, right? So there's a template in VAO, you edit it, you can add any kind of information you like to. I put a logo in there of a number of the pizza place, application diagram. So you can customize your reports. And once you build the template, every report will be from that template, have the same look and feel, put in your logo, like I said, everything there. And again, these are uh, scheduled to run. So the plan definition, that shows you everything in your DR plan and all the steps that are taken. And for my NIST folks out there, it also shows you uh, who's made changes, right? So if I create a plan, and then Van logs in and changes a bunch of stuff. We're gonna see that at the end of the plan, there's a full audit log going on. So definitely great for compliance. And again, that lightweight readiness check, we can run that every day to make sure that we're meeting our RPOs and our DR resources are in a good state. We'll Perfect. run that readiness check right now, why not? Isn't that, I've never heard, oh, by the way, I didn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah, I got you. So really good audit tool as well. Run that readiness check and guess what, Van? We're done. We have a storage orchestration plan and that's it. Wow, wow, Pretty 10 fun. minutes. We're done, we're done. 10, 10 minutes. minutes. That's it, we're done. No, we're not done. Um, but yeah, we created our plan. <laughs> uh, now the next step would be to see what comes back with the readiness check. Hey, look, it passed the check. That means I can literally go launch a failover right now and it'll probably work. I'm not going to do that, however, because I use some stuff that I'm going to use in another failover plan. But you know, guys, that's how easy VAO is to get up, get set configuring and using, right? So 20 minutes to configure, 10 minutes to create a new plan. Guess what? You're ready to go. The data labs uh, we'll talk about next week, but that's everything pretty much in black and white. Now, I did something really fun because if we come over here, we also have an API in VAO because everybody loves APIs, right? So if you're talking about a system like VAO, you might want to integrate it with something you have in your environment, right? You might want to integrate it with like your ticketing system or I don't know, whatever you want. We have this API and we have a lot of capabilities within this API, right? So we can do a ton of stuff. So we can actually 
run plans with the API. Wouldn't that be cool, man? Like if we could just like use the API I, to kick off a plan. I love Swagger, just so you know. I love I Swagger. Love I, I love Swagger. <laughs> just love it. I was like using something that didn't have Swagger the other day. And I'm like, I can't handle this. I need my Swagger. Yeah, I think I'm going to wait on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here we have VAO. We have a plan in the enabled state, which means it's ready to run, right? So if you want to use that plan operator role, it would need to be in the enabled state for them to come in and run. So we have enabled state. And uh, maybe we can figure out a way to hit this API and do a failover. Let's see Let's see how this goes. So let's see what else I have running in my lab van that might be helpful with this. Oh, look, here's V1. What do you know? And Stop I have it. a one here. You yeah. know V1? I'm amazed. I am so amazed. amazed. <laughs> so I have an alarm here and let's edit this alarm and I can tell you it works because I might have accidentally triggered it this morning. Um, it's going to look at, if we look at assignment, it's looking at my cluster. It doesn't work exactly the way I want to. I need to do a little tweaking, but it'll do the job. I have a couple of rules in here, but what I have here is a remediation action set to automatic. So it'll just run to run a script. And if I look at my PowerShell script, I um, cancel that because I just changed something. Make sure I didn't mess that up. So I wrote a script to basically come in and hit the API and run a failover plan because why not, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over and I'm going to remind you of some of the Veeam 1 magic. I'm going to tell you that I cheat and uh, my VAO environment is nested. Right. So do we remember that we can actually control VMs via Veeam 1? So let's come here and let's nuke all my vSphere hosts because they're VMs. So we're going to use Veeam 1 to power off my vSphere environment. Because why not? We're cool like that. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story, I decided to kind of reboot everything this morning to be nice and fresh for everybody. And I accidentally did this, not meaning to. And I'm like, what's happening in my environment? I don't understand. Um, but now let's go back. Yeah. Oops. So yeah. let's go back up to my vCenter, right? My cluster. So we're going to take a look at our Veeam 1 environment. And we're just going to keep an eye on what's happening in here. And let's pull up VAO next door. And we're going to keep an eye on that site two plan I had configured. And let's see, go over here a little bit. Site two on tap. We see it's enabled. It's just kind of sitting there. It's in the verified state. It's not really doing anything right now. That's cool. So my vSAN data store went, Van, which means my host is about to fail. Oh, we can see it in VAO. We can see in Veeam 1 that something's going on. See? Excellent. We've got to wait a little bit more. You know, sometimes when we do these, it's good to kind of time slice some of the stuff, but it's also good to see some of it happen as well. Yeah. Ah, here we go, here we go, here we go. Look, 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 failover, failover. So there we have it. So if we go back to our alarms here, I have, and you can see VAO is failing over, and I'll show you that in a minute. But if I come back to Veeam 1, we can see I had my remediation set to automatic, so it's been acknowledged. My script ran, right? And then my failover is happening in VAO, and my site is failing over. So if we open this up, and my computer wants to behave today, ah, oh, well. Uh-oh, we have an error. Somebody didn't run their data lab test like they said to. See, my site is completely dead here. It's just like done, right? Because I turned everything off from Veeam 1. And then VAO is going to do its thing. And we're going to let that run for a while. Now, Van, I think I forgot to show you editing the plan that I said I was going to, right? I was like, oh, I'm going to show you how to edit. You're going to shortchange me in the editing. I, I'm crushed. I really am. I know. I totally forgot. I'm sorry. But if we come here and edit a plan, um, cool. so here we can see everything, right? So we have pre-planned steps. You can add steps here. Any of these ca canned things here, like send email, generate event, really good if you need to integrate with something. Uh, all you can see my custom scripts here. 
So add stuff before a plan. Here's the VMs in the plan. If I wanted to edit the steps and add them, uh, what is this server right here? This is a regular server. So let's pretend it's a SQL server. Why not? Verify SQL database, but I want to do that um, before I run my application verification. We can do that. And then, oh, wait, this is a database. I lied. So this one should start up before the other one. So let's move, come here and move the startup order. So you could see if we were going in sequence, it would run through whatever sequence of the VMs that we had here. And again, uh, post plan steps. That's really cool. Just select, click, 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 done. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, so like one thing I don't have in this plan, but I like to do sometimes is this like send email or generate event sent. So like sometimes I'll have it like pre plan steps, sends an email, hey, your plan is failing over. Uh, post plan steps, hey, your plan is finished failing over, that kind of thing, right? Gotcha. Um, so again, you can get really granular, customize this however you want. Come in here, edit all these plan steps as you see fit. And uh, really simple and easy. And you know, this is something, this HTML5 interface is like wicked easy to use. So you can just kind of hand it over to the app team and you know, they can handle clicking and adding things. It's very like modular kind of build your own adventure type thing. We're not gonna save that. But if we go back to, I believe I had, oh, you know what I did, Van? I did something really silly. So um, remember I started a replica? Oh, I did, oh, yeah. You can still see it, you can still see it. Yeah, it's coming. The center hasn't figured out that everything's dead yet. So there I'm proving that my replica um, actually worked and powered on the, the plan I launched at the beginning. You can kind of still see it in vCenter as running, even though vCenter is like, why did you just kill all my hosts? What's happening? Third time today, vCenter, I'm very sorry. I will make it up to you. <laughs> but wait, but wait, there's more. If we come over to here, we can see site two VMs are now running in site one. And we have a lovely NetApp NFS data store two running in site one. And that's all from VAO here, right? From this site two NetApp plan. I failed site two over to site one. Uh, it's still running through some stuff. It found something it didn't like. I obviously didn't run my data lab test like I should have, but even though it didn't like something, and I think that warning might be related to the way I killed the host, it's probably like, I can't find the VMs to turn them off, or I can't find the source because you like literally downed everything. Um, but yeah, so this actually isn't running now. vCenter just thinks it is. But um, basically failed it over with the API using Veeam 1. Now, I, OK, I have to add like a little disclaimer here. You might not want to actually do that in production, like completely say, I'm just going to have something fail over my whole site for me. You might not want to do that automatically. You might want to set that remediation in action to buy approval at least so you can make sure Yes, the site has actually failed versus Melissa rebooted the ESX cluster this morning and this whole thing kicked off. Uh, I did do that this morning, forgetting I had the script running. But yeah, that's how easy it is to use. Again, you have the API where you can integrate into existing management systems you have. You can trigger stuff via the API, really handy to have. Simple, really to use, easy to use interface, create those plans, 20-minute uh, configuration. Van, do you have anything that you want to see that's not testing or reporting? Because we're saving that to for part yeah, two. No, no, I know. I mean, I think the thing that it, that is really critical to, to carry out of this today is that hey, not only is it really simple to do to set up, configure, and get this thing running for the first time. The larger piece is, did you guys see how powerful it was? going from hey you can give it approval to do it or you can let it do its own thing and it literally will move stuff in your vSphere environment just like you're sitting there clicking it yourself that is an amazing tool yeah so let me just show you one last thing on this plan that i ran from the api so i uh, recall now whoops so if we come in here and we see this warning uh, remember you can use vao for a migration tool and vao is very graceful it will actually come in and shut down your VMs for you, right? To do that final kind of NetApp sync. Uh, because I literally powered off my ESX host, it couldn't do that. So it's like, hey, uh, yeah, all your stuff is still kind of going, what's going on? I mean, it still ran fine and worked, but it couldn't do that graceful shutdown of everything, which VAO would actually do for you if you were just using it as a migration or a temporary move tool. Now, when I come over to my VMs and I take a look at them, I could see all my steps ran, very simple steps. But one other cool thing is I can actually access the console right from here as well. I was hoping we'd get one of them to pop up so they could, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, go ahead. 
so here we go. We can actually um, come in here and see our VMs console, right? So these are just like little Linux machines I use for testing. But you know, if, even if this was full on Windows, right? Control, delete, login, check your VM, make sure everything's going okay from there. So there, there, there's just so much stuff you can do within VAO, right? That uh, it's really simple to use. It's really powerful. And it does a lot of people that people, uh, it does a lot of things that people wouldn't necessarily think of when they talk about a DR tool or think of a DR tool, right? But our whole goal here is we want to orchestrate the failover of your applications and your data centers. So when we talk about scheduling, right? Let's just click, click one of these plans, right? I could actually schedule these plans to run as well. Um, so I could come here, launch schedule, and I could chain them together too. So I could say, hey, this plan run, then this plan, then this plan, then this plan. You can get you get really granular with the stuff. It's really really flexible and really simple. And reliable because hey guess what you can do all that data lab testing and prove it's going to work before it happens bingo yeah that's that's a brutal part about it. that's that is so awesome well great well i tell you part one was awesome you know i, I know, know a lot of information a lot of information tons of stuff there you know one of the things guys too before we cut over to the questions and answers you know make sure that at the end of each one of these sections we'll post them back on the website uh, and we'll have links on, on both of our sites for them. But I want you to know that there'll be links to, one, these videos, as well as the technical documentation that's there. Remember to always take a look at the forums on Veeam. There's a ridiculous wealth of information out of the forums. Because a lot of times we'll all be out there, and even I know Melissa does it like I do, you'll go, what was that? And I'll go to the forums and search to remember that one cool thing that I couldn't remember. And they're there. So wealth of knowledge there. So, yeah, any last exactly. words for you? Yeah, yeah so um, if you, Van has a link for my YouTube channel. I have a sad number of subscribers, so I can't give you a really nifty link to follow. But if you subscribe, maybe I can make it youtube.com slash Vemus one day. Um, <laughs> but I have a ton of VAO videos on there. I have a ton of Veeam one videos on there. I have some VCR videos on there. And what I'm trying to do, especially for VAO, is get pretty regular about it. So I'm starting a DR test Tuesday, where hopefully every Tuesday I'm going to post a little tidbit about, you know, working with VAO for DR testing, right? Because DR testing is one of those things that people overlook in their environment. And the fact is, you know, a lot of the value being what a lot of the value VAO can bring. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, Veeam one. No, this is VAO. There's an O. Oh, it's blue. I don't know. It's whatever. Um, but a lot of the value you can bring is this DR testing, right? No more locking yourself in a data center for a weekend. Like just All click right. a button. It's just like launching a plan that I showed you, right? Go click, make a couple of check marks, and you're ready to go in your testing. Good deal. Well, great. Well, listen, again, let's uh, take a minute. If you'll unshare your screen, let's drop yes, over. Yes. Now. No, that's perfectly fine. Let's drop over and get some uh, Q&A. And uh, right. I know we've got several things that are out here. And we appreciate you guys for being here for part one. And later this week, I'll have stuff out on Twitter and LinkedIn where you'll find the links to go to part two. You don't want to miss it. You know, today was the, the I know, really part cool two stuff. is going to sound boring, right? Ooh, documentation and testing. No, it's really important yeah. and really powerful. And it will make your life so much easier, I promise. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, we appreciate you guys being here. Thanks so much from the Vanimal and uh, VMS and uh, Melissa Palmer. And uh, we'll get to Q&A right now.